What's up? J Street Moto here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be walking around a 2021 Road Glide CVO. Uh, this is Patrick's bike. Well, one of the Patrick's bikes. Uh, and hearing what he's had done to it. I hope you enjoy. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. I'm here with Patrick, it's JST Moto. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Patrick with his 2021 CVO Road Glide. 2021 CVO Road Glide. There we go. I All right. I don't have a name for it. I buy and sell bikes. Tend to buy and sell bikes every six months to eight months. Yeah, I wasn't uh, gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything, but he changes bikes kind of like the rest of us change underwear. But I'm just saying. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that, there's a lot of truth to that. But I actually have had this since January, uh, and I really haven't had any desire to change it. Uh, I come from really wanting to be different than anyone else and have custom motorcycles. So I had a lot of custom motorcycles, buy and sell them, and gravitated to CVOs because not as many people have them but as i get older they're comfortable bikes and you know they have their own kind of flair to it so unless they come out with a 2023 that just knocks my socks off i think i'm gonna keep this for a little while uh especially considering the amount of work i've already put into it all right let's talk about that so let's start at the front and work our way back and tell me what you've done to this yeah so uh i've got a long ride uh windshield uh I have a few of them i tend to gravitate towards this one. Uh, it's a 10 inch, uh, I think it's called their uh, Thresher series. And then I did some markers on there, custom dynamics. That's these guys. That's these here. Uh, and and the, these. And those as well, yeah. And so basically what I wanted to do is, since I took off the reflector on the front forks, I wanted to be seen on the side. Uh, and then of course, a little extra lighting in the front never hurts. And then those custom dynamics also have that kind of grill mesh, which helps stop rocks and some bugs and, and all that stuff from getting in there. That's cool. So, so yeah, so then, you know, one of the biggest things I've recently done that I've really liked for performance is uh, the tires. So Harley stock tires, they tend to go straight really yes, nicely. Dunlop. Uh, and they're Dunlops. But to me, going in the twisties and that sort of thing, we're about, a, we're about 45 minutes to an hour into the Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, into that area, and then up there a couple hours, and we're, we're in the mountains here. Uh, so you got the Cruise Tech, right? So I went with Mesa Cruise Tech, and I will tell you, a lot more nimble than Harley. Uh, I don't know how long they'll last compared to Harley's, but I will tell you that this bike is a lot more nimble with those Mesa tires, those, those Cruise Tech tires. Now, is that stock wheel on it? That is a stock wheel, so on the 21s and the 22s. Uh, they That's came, what, a 21 inch? That is a 21 inch, uh, and they put in that, that uh, spoke wheel. It is it is tubeless. If you see right here, if you get a little closer, the spokes actually come out. There you go. Right there. You. Yeah. Uh, when I first seen these come out on the 21s, I was not a fan. Uh, now that I see it more and more, I actually really like it. It's probably the one thing that I get asked about about this bike a lot is is those spokes and if it's a stock wheel or if it's an aftermarket wheel and it actually came from harley so it's pretty cool the paint job is called uh, uh it's, it's sunset orange fade and sunset fade black so okay. in the sun which we're obviously overcast here today it looks orange in the shade and in overcast it looks, it looks more, more red, red. Yeah. And then the black actually isn't really a black if you get close. So it's not to like it, the vivid black. It's not. It actually, if you look at it, it's actually a maroon with yeah, flake in with there. Yeah, flake inside of it. And so 
Yeah, it's a little bit of a different paint job. I really enjoyed it. So I'm a big fan of performance, going fast around turns. So one thing you don't see in there is I do have the Legend Axio front suspension in there. Okay. Um, Did you swap the rear suspension out too? The rear suspension. Uh, I also have the Legend uh, Revo Arcs, so they do have the remote okay. canisters. I just opted at this point to have it underneath the bags versus on top of the bag. Yeah, I got you. I may change that just simply because of riding up in the mountains. It's a lot easier to change that, but we'll go we'll go over that towards the end. So, so 117 motor comes stock on it. What have you done to the motor? Yeah, so uh, got the full uh, stage two with uh, SNS 475 chain cam. Uh, you know, oil, 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 you know, SNS oil um, oil pump, oil pump. Uh, everything. You know, SNS. Uh, 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 lifters there uh, did a power vision tune uh, D and D American Performance in Mooresville, North Carolina did all the work and then it was dyno tuned by Mike Beeland over at A1 Cycles. Okay. Uh, does about 124 horse and 125, uh, 135 on the That's, on the torque. That's respectable. Uh, and and really a lot of that's probably contributed to A1 Cycles uh, and then this Chrome Works dominator two into two exhaust but it's really not a traditional two into two so the headers are actually stepped and then there's an inner collector uh, usually where the where you you have your uh, catalytic converter in the middle yeah, yeah, there, yeah. there's a little inner collector for a little back pressure. Uh, and then it's got a full two inch exhaust on the opposite side, whereas normally on these bikes, the oh, they step side, it down. It's smaller on the left side. Than it's, it is yeah, on the, they usually on the step it down. Side. This is two inches on both sides for both nice. exhausts. So it's got its own slip-ons. You can't just put any kind of regular slip-on on there. Now, have you upgraded the stereo at all, or are you sticking with the stock CVO stereo? Yeah, so the CVO on the 21 started with the Stage 2 uh, Rockford Fosgate Harley collaboration on the front and the rear. Uh, I'm fine with it. It's not, I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's, it's loud enough for me. Uh, I did go with uh, uh, factory 47 10-inch bars when I first got the bike. Nice. I've since upgraded to these 14-inch fat baggers. Yeah. Uh, Who made those? These are fat baggers. Factory 47. Uh, no, these are fat baggers, FBI. Okay. Uh, and they're 14s. Nothing against the factory 47s. I just had the availability to get these in 14s, and I preferred them over the 10 inches that I, I initially did. Now, you running CarPlay on this at all, or do you have an adapter yeah, for it? Great. Or is the... Yeah, that's a great question. So, actually, it took me, I had a CVO, 19 CVO Street Glide before this, and couldn't find anyone to flash my computer to uh, get CarPlay to work and the adapters on, on these CVOs, because it already has a whim installed, does not work. So those little $15 adapters you get on Amazon and eBay yeah, yeah, yeah. do not work. I finally found a stereo, a guy that does uh, aftermarket stereos through Techno Research's website, called him up and he's like, yeah man, it takes me longer to get the saddlebag and the side cover off than it is to actually flash it. Paid him 30 bucks and he flashed it. So all the dealers around here told me it can't be done. Uh, they all have access to do it, but they just do not know how. So if anyone has a CVO and wants CarPlay without using their headset, definitely look at Techno Research's website, find your audio programmer that's close to you, and they, they will likely know how to do it. Perfect. Uh, so then from there, um, um, got some more uh, custom dynamics lights here. Uh, so those do light up and also have turn signals. Uh, when you uh, install, I do. I did put on one and a half inch uh, saddlebag guards. Uh, usually, the ones that you find uh, online are, you know, Amazon that sort of thing. They're five eighths inch. They're narrower. So yeah. They're a little narrower. So I got the inch and a half there, inch and a quarter. Excuse me. Kind of match the the uh, engine the engine guards there, which. And you got the custom dynamics around the back. I do, and actually on the engine guards there, you can't put, at least on mine. If you actually see the, the, the tube, the actual diameter, it's not quite round, so I was not able to put any highway pegs mounted on the engine guard, so I did do frame-mounted zero engine guard, uh, uh, highway pegs. Oh, okay, right and off your deck. I matched the Kahuna peg collection that is already on my bike. Cool. So and then towards the back, uh, got a little bit more custom dynamics lights, got the saddlebag lights, obviously the stock CVO lights. And then I added the Paul Yaffe, um, uh, I call it the boat dock light that these Harley yeah, CEOs yeah, come yeah. on. Yep. 
I don't like those boat dock lights, so take that off and I put the polyaphy on there. It's, uh, just, it's a little bit more cleaner. Yeah. It also lights up the the, um, the license plate a little bit more, which is, could be a good thing or a bad thing. But and you got your Chromeworks uh, Dominator uh, tips there. Yep. Um, CVO uh, OEM uh, Tour Pack. Tour Pack from Harley. Um, now were, which one is that? Is that the Razor or is that this the... This is the Chopped. Um, okay. I had to buy it directly from Harley at the time. No one matched this paint. And actually, all the painters around here told me the hardest part to match is that black because it is a maroon with the flake on there. Uh, now there's a couple people across the country, uh, I think one in New Jersey, one in uh, Wisconsin, that have had their hands on these bikes and have been able to match it. But at that time, I had to, to kind of to go to Harley and do it. Have the, uh, I'm not sure if this is Hogworks or Aban Black, but you've got their inner liner and stitching here just to give it a little bit of protection so stuff doesn't kind of yeah, rub against, rub the against there and get damaged and that sort of thing. It just looks a little bit nicer. Now, will a full helmet fit in there? It will not. Okay. Uh, only a half helmet will fit in there. You, you do need a King Tour Pack to get uh, that, that uh, full helmet in there. And you're running the stock CVO seat. Well, so I have as many seats as I do windshields. So that's <laughs> one thing I change out a lot depending on the type of riding I'm doing. So that is actually the stock CVO seat. However, it has been modified. This specific seat has been modified by Mean City Cycles. A little upgraded foam. This particular seat, I was having some tailbone issues, so they did a tailbone relief for me. Okay. But I run the same seat as you as well. Uh, actually, that's why that Tour Pack pad is a little different than the seat because uh, I have you, I have your seat, the Lapera Maverick Daddy yeah. Long Legs, but I have it in the Diamond version, so that that matches that. And I just took it off the other day, took the Tour Pack off, and just ran the Solo seat for it for a quick little bike night that we had here for uh, Throttle Thursdays at Murtho Made. So I put that seat on, nice. kept it on there. It's comfortable enough for an hour or two, if not three. But not as not as comfortable as that Lapera, and then longer rides I actually run the uh, uh, Mustang Summit seat with the backrest and that sort of thing. Okay. So I switch it yeah. up, and depending on the seat I use, I'll switch up to a taller windshield or to a shorter windshield, that sort of thing. Um, nice. Now you got heated grips. Yeah, that came stock. That's part of the Kahuna collection. What I like about the CVOs or Harley grips in general is that dial is super clean. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a little colder here today at about 50 degrees, so I'm running it at about number three with uh, lighter gloves. Uh, keeps the hands warm, but where you don't have to wear thick, thick gloves as well. Um, because I have um, on the front suspension on these bikes, because they're 21 inches, and I put the Legends on there, what ends up happening is with Harley's, from what I understand, really scared about putting a 21 inch wheel on a bike and then the front fender getting hit by uh, your front end. So yeah, they yeah. actually put an inch block, from what I understand, stock on, um, on on these front suspensions. So basically you lose an inch. So putting in the specific Legend Brands Axios for these bikes, you gain that inch back of suspension. Well, be, being that, and then I have 13 inch shocks in the rear, it really raised up the bike a lot. So what I did was I put an inch extension uh, performance machine um, uh, kickstand yeah. on there as well. I got uh, I got an inch extra on the rear brake pedal, and then that is a Arlen S one inch extension on the shift uh, lever as well. Okay, it gives me a little bit of room. Size 13 shoe, uh, yeah, kind of sure. fit on the floorboard there. So I always run my bikes a little bit longer with with the with the brake pedal and the the shifter there. Stock clutch. No, I got the recluse clutch, so when I did the stage okay. two, I did a recluse clutch. Uh, I did the auto clutch first, uh, which was really cool. In first gear, you don't have to have the clutch in. The problem is, is it had some kind of an issue, and it burned up real fast. <laughs> and so uh, I had D&D &D take that out and put the standard torque uh, recluse clutch in there. So I don't have that auto feature anymore, but at least it, it's functional and works properly. Uh, so that's pretty much it, you know, uh, between that stage two, all the, I basically went with comfort and performance. Comfort, performance, and then, you know, 
just a little bit of style there if you will yeah dude it's a beautiful bike man thank you for taking the time to walk around it with us and uh as always ride safe